So the next thing I want to cover is now um, going into Python. So Python has uh, support for regular expressions also. It uses these um, Perl-like regular expressions. So I know um, nobody uses Perl anymore, and it's really sad, but um, Perl is, is really powerful, and, it, and it's, it's most, one of its most powerful features is it does really good with matching text patterns. So, so regular expressions are, it's like, it's like really, really well built for it. Um, and so the syntax that we use is called Perl-like regular expressions. So um, the RE module uh, is, uh, is the module in Python that, that supports regular expressions. There's some other support in, in different things too. In fact, we've already seen the, the find operator, for example, in a string or a, a list. And, and so those, those are kind of like regular expressions also. Um, but uh, it's very powerful, but it, it has, Python has its own um, way of doing regular expressions that, that we need to cover. So there's, um, there's match, which will just match a regular expression. Um, there's search, which is related to, to match. And then there's uh, replace. Um, and so also um, we've seen this thing with special characters and... Um, with regular expressions, we, we use uh, special characters. And so if we want to have the string be exactly as we type it and not, it can be interpreted as, as a regular expression, but not any, it, it goes into the regular expression logic as we type it. So when we want, if we want to have that expression just go straight into and, and understood as a regular expression, we can make it a raw string. And the way, we, the way we define a raw string is we put a, a little r um, right in front of the quote like this. So this is a, it's a type of a string, but it's, it's interpreted exactly as we, as we type it. So we'll see how this works in a minute. So we can import the, the re module using this import function. And then there's some, um, some markdown text here. So uh, first we have the search function. So this will search uh, for the first occurrence uh, of a regular expression. Um, so we're going to, the way this works is we type re.search and then we type the pattern that we're looking for, the string that we want to search, and then we have some optional um, flags. So again, th we have the pattern, the string that we're going to search, um, and the way that search works is it searches only the beginning of the string. So this is like if we had that little caret sign. I don't really like that they separate search and match because um, match can find anywhere in the string and search only finds the beginning, um, but that's how they've, they've done it in Python. So, um, and one of, the cool, one of the nice things about Python though is that it, it uses this kind of object-oriented logic. So it, when you match something, it returns a match object which has all these properties and you can use that. So. Um, And sorry, I I'm, I misspoke slightly. So the um, the match uh, function is the one that matches uh, only at the beginning. The search one um, can match will match it anywhere. But it by default it just searches for the first occurrence of the pattern. Okay. So let's uh, let's see this with an example. So we're going to have this. Uh, this sentence X um, begin with review and friends. So this is a diving uh, reference here. Um, so we're going to do re.search and we're going to search for a, a regular expression that is a capital W followed by a lowercase a to z uh, zero or more times and we're going to search in X. So, so these are positional positional um, parameters or positional arguments for this function. So this is the regular expression um, and this is the, uh, the thing we're going to search. So this returns a, a match object which has, um, if it doesn't match it will return false. So it did match and it says um, this matched this word with and it spans from position 6 to 10 
which is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 here in the string. Um, if we then uh, take that group object and then use this um, dot group um, method on that object, we'd get the actual object that matched, or the, the, uh, the part that matched. So we could also have done, um, we, got, we also could have done like this, um, Right, so we can sit, store that thing as um, as a as a variable, and then ha it has these attributes. Um, so we can also, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that, exactly that's what I have right here. So, uh, so same idea. Um, we can also we have this um, as I said, we have this match function that will only match the beginning. So this, if we just run uh, match using this this with, um, we're trying to search for the word with, it doesn't work. But if we type uh, begin, it does. So it'll, this match function only matches the beginning. Um, but we can achieve the same thing using search with this special begin, you know, match beginning of string character. Um, so. If we type um, search with the, that thing, it'll match, and width will not, because that's not at the beginning. So this, you can really focus more on, on search and not worry so much about match, because you can do everything that match does in search with just using this begin, uh, beginning of line operator. Okay, another thing um, you can do, you can have more, you can have um, more complicated um, regular expressions that will um, match sections of the string. So just like we saw how we can save parts of a match using parentheses, um, that works in Python as well. So here we're going to say 3.8 liters in one gallon is the string we're going to search, and then our, our regular expression is going to search for uh, some some number, so it's zero, 0 through 9 and a, and a decimal, followed by liters in, followed by 0 through 9 and a decimal. Um, it's going to match that line, and then we're going to make it case insensitive. So this re.i um, is case insensitive. So even though uh, here liters and gallon are capitalized and they're not here, it will still match. So there's there's a lot more moving parts in the Python regular expression, but it's more powerful also. So uh, that search object is what's returned by this function, and that search object has one attribute or, or function called groups. So this will give us the, t the groups are the, the, the things that match, the groups of, regular, of, of these regular expressions that matched. Um, and the so groups with an S gives us the individual parts here that match, and group without an S gives us uh, the whole part that matched, basically this, this, this whole string. Um, and uh, this is just a little if-else statement. So it basically says if this search object exists after running this, it will give us the the group and the, um, the the first and the second thing that matched. So this is all for matching and, and um, basically using Python to say, okay, does this line of text contain this thing I'm looking for? You can use this in a, in a program to search for, you know, if the, if the thing is found, then you're going to do something with it. Um, the next one I want to cover is the uh, sub function or substitute. Um, so this is uh, really useful because this allows you to search and replace. So the way this works is you match a pattern, you replace it, um, you do that, you're doing that on a string and then you can set like the number of times you want to do that. By default it will change all occurrences. So this is like um, that said slash g which is the global so it's just going to change everything. So by default it will change everything. Um, so 
for example, we're going to have uh, a string here that's a, a phone number, and although it doesn't look like a phone number, we can change it. Um, maybe I I probably did that so no one would like try to call the number, but whatever. I trust you. I think. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. I hope none of my code is dependent on that. Anyway, so this is the this is the uh, the phone number. Um, we're gonna substitute. Um, first of all, we have the same says substitute um, Python style comments. So this would be if we wanted to remove uh, the pound sign and anything after it. This would be uh, the pound sign followed by any character any number of times, and then all the way to the end of the line, just to be sure. And it's gonna replace that with an empty string, and it's going to do that on this variable, this string called phone. And we can see we've now removed everything but the comment, but we still have this space here. So we have this nice function strip, which works on strings, so we can run that. Um, and now we have, um, we can remove anything other than digits. So here we're going to say, we're going to run sub on the non-digit character. So any non-digit character is going to be replaced with an empty string. And this is actually running on uh, phone. So this is actually running on this thing here. So, um, But since we didn't have any numbers in this last part, it, it'll, it'll work. But probably we want to do it on, on num is safer. So um, I talked to, uh, earlier about how you can uh, match substrings and replace those. So and now that's really useful for like file names, for example. So um, here's a file name that you might get from some sequencing data, where you have the sample name, um, the lane, the read, and the um, some number after that. And let's say you wanted to just match this L001 part. So the way you would do that is you can make a substitute where you have your regular expression is here. You're matching any character uh, any number of times followed by an underscore and then you're gonna have L00, a 1 or a 2 and this whole thing is gonna be in um, parentheses so it'll be saved and then we have an underscore and then an R followed by 1 or 2 and that's we're gonna save that and then an underscore, any number of other characters, and then dot fast q. So this will match this string, but importantly, we can then replace that with this next thing, which is going to be uh, in Python. We're using um, a backslash, not a not a, a dollar sign. Um, so this will give us the thing that matched in this first instance. Um, so this whole matching thing will be changed to this. And so we are left with just this L001. Um, we could have done also, let's see, yeah. Because, and if we did, if we did dash three, it should give an error because it's not, there is, you know, there's only two matching things. One, two. There's uh, another, um, way that regular expressions work with, with Python with this RE module in that you can compile a regular expression into a, 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 an object um, that you can then um, use for searching um, other things. So this is kind of, you got to kind of like switch it around in your mind. Um, but so for example, we can create a regular expression that's A followed by B any number of times. And then we can take that regular expression and it has its own methods, including this one called search. And then within that method we search for a we search in a string. So it's kind of instead of having this 
you know, there's a, I can think of three ways to do this. We can have the string, we can search in that, we can um, use the RE search method, or we can use this, um, at this method of the, the regular expression compile object. So it will match, it will give us this match object. We can then, we have then have this group thing. So the group is um, the, the part that matched. So this A, B. And then it has other properties. So it has a span, which is the start and the end. So it, it's nice in that it gives you these other properties. Um, the other thing about this um, is that we can reuse this command. Just like we could reuse it, we could make a string formatter like you did in the homework. And you can, you can use that string formatter over and over again. You can have a, a regular expression object, and you can use that regular expression object over and over again. Um, so we can create a, a regular expression here, which is a to z um, one or more times. And then we're going to use that to match this word tempo. And again, this can have, uh, it gives us, we can get the start and the end of that match and, and, and um, the actual part that matched. Um, so there's a couple more, uh, a couple more Python things to cover here. So there's the um, the find all function. So we can, um, if we want to find all examples of regular expression, we can use find all, and it will t return those uh, as a list. So um, here is a regular expression where it's just a to z, so all the letters in a string that are lowercase, and we're going to specify it in a string, and then we're going to take this, again, this is using the compiled regular expression as the object, and then it has this method find all, which can then be used on the string. So if we, if we run this, this will find each lowercase letter in this string, and then spit those back out as a list. If we wanted to find all of the words in a sentence, we can use find all, and our regular expression would be uh, uh, in this case, we're going to do capital A. Let's do let's do this actually. Um, and we're going to do so this is going to give us any word that begins either with a capital or a lowercase letter followed by um, zero or more <coughs> lowercase letters, but it won't match a period. So this, this is a regular expression. This is an approach where we could use to take any sentence and get all of the words in that sentence as um, um, as uh, as elements of a list. And uh, by the way, um, if you wanted to then reconstitute that sentence, you could use words.join. I think this should, no, it'd be join words. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, this is weird. Okay. Um, I think this will work. Yeah. This always blows my mind. I don't know why. Um, so the string space has very the strings have various attributes, one of which is join, which can join a list. So it joins all the elements of a list um, using that string. So for example, uh, if you had I'll just do a little um, if you had um, some numbers and you wanted to make a CSV file, you could do this. Oi. 
What did I do? Oh, maybe it, oh, maybe it has to be strings. Let's try that. Okay. Which in practice is fine because you can always convert. Um, actually, let me do this. Sorry, I I just wanted to to cover this while I was thinking of it. Um, so we could do. So do you see what I did there? Um, I just converted that list to uh, a list of strings instead of a list of integers using this function str. I'm not sure we covered this function, but there's one called str and there's one called int, which does the opposite, converts a, a string to an integer. So then we can use this join thing. To, so this is like the kind of thing you could do to make a, like a CSV file, right? Um, but anyway. Uh, Back to regular expressions. Um, so if we have this, let's change, I have to change this. Um, we wanted to use the built-in methods of, of uh, strings. I don't believe they support um, regular expressions, but they do support just basic searching for text. Um, you can use uh, find, there's also one called starts with, and it returns true if that string starts with that word. This is kind of just a handy, handy function, and um, returns. Uh, uh, let's see. This should be what I want. So, yeah. Returns true if it ends with the, uh, this string in this case. Um, if you want to use starts with but not actually start at zero, which is the beginning of the string, you can specify a positional number. So you can say uh, is, and in this case it should be lowercase. So those are some built in string methods, um, uh, much like. The join, join is another built-in string method, actually. Um, the, the tricky thing with join is that, the tricky for me is that, um, so in other programming languages, there's functions where you have a list and you want to join it. You want to have some glue, and you're going to glue all the elements of the list together with like a, a comma or a space or a tab. Um, but in Python, the syntax is kind of backwards. So the 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 object that you start with is the space or this comma or the tab, and then it has this join method that then works on the list. So you just got to kind of like make it that make it go backwards. Um, so finally, is this uh, regular expression cheat sheet? So this is kind of summarizing a lot of the stuff that we covered in this lesson, and you can go straight to here if you want to see. Um, how the uh, regular expressions are are um, kind of just the overall summary. So matching the beginning of the line, matching the end of the line, etc. And um, and then we have some examples of of, of things that would match. So um, just to kind of put it all in one place for you. Um, Can, there's, I'm not going to talk about greedy and non-greedy repetition. Um, it gets kind of gets kind of hairy. Um, so there's, yeah, but we covered pretty much everything else here. So with the last few minutes, are there any questions or anything I can kind of explain better? I promise it's fun. <laughs> I know you're like, what the heck? What are we, what are we doing? But um, it's and it's super useful. Um, if you, for example, if you um, someone hands you a 
I use this all the time. You can copy and paste text into, you know, Atom or, or Sublime Text, and you can, um, you know, let's say somebody hands you a, um, I don't know, you, you copy text from a Word document and it's got, you know, line numbers here, and, right, and you, you want to remove the line numbers and, and the space. So if, if you didn't have regular expressions, you'd have to go through line by line. This file could have a thousand lines, right? But I have regular expressions. I know how to use them. So I know I want to remove that line number. So I'm going to do 0 through 9 uh, any number of times, and then a space. And then boom, it matches. And I say, I want to replace that with nothing. And I say, replace all. Boom. Um, or let's say uh, someone hands me a list of of numbers, right? And I need to input those as, let's say I want to type that into Python. Well, Python doesn't take lists like this. Python takes lists with commas. So I want to search for a new line. So it's a backslash n. <coughs> And you can see it's it's that's the new line that's finding. And I want to replace that with a comma and a space. And now I have a list, and I can do that. I can put my brackets here, and I can copy that. I can go into Python, and I can say a list is that right. So um, if someone hands me uh, a comma separated values file like this and I want tabs instead, I can do, I can search, you know, here I have comma followed by a space. So I can take comma space and replace that with a tab. And now those are, those that little symbol is what um, Adam tells me is a tab character um, or I can change it back change a tab to a to a comma and now I've got my CSV file again um, and many you know thousands of other types of things like that so Definitely, you want to get familiar with this. Um, you know, don't worry about sed and grep, and even the um, even the Python regular expression syntax is, is is kind of complicated. But the part that I hope that you can take away from this is just knowing how to make these regular expressions and and, and doing this kind of like triage on your data because it can save you um, tons of time, and it's really handy to be able to see like. The matching part. So, um, oh yeah. Uh huh. So I need some. Do I need text in? I need text in the cell first, right? Oh, cool. Ah, that's very cool. I didn't know that. So you can, I can search, uh, let's go back here. It'd be nice if I could see the cell. But, mm -hmm, let's do. Oh, okay, it searches the whole. Does it search the whole? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're right. I think it is, yeah. So this gives us case, so I could do, so this, if I want to, yeah. Um, that's really cool. What's this? Oh, okay. This place, oh, in the selected cells. 
Right, because if you did the normal find, it brings up, you know, you're, you're, you don't want that. You want the, just, just type F when you're in this mode. That's really cool. Thanks for that. So you can, yeah, this allows you to search your code in the Jupyter Notebook. So we can see. Um, oh, but it's not in the, oh, I typed it wrong. Cool. Okay. Um, I'll see you guys next time.